call me a killer. A monster. I'm gonna find out who did this to me. And I'm gonna make him pay. Welcome back to Retro Rebound in today's video. I gotta start this one off with a story because to get into the game we're talking about today, you need to know the tale of Maddie's Xbox 360 nostalgia. Yes, to me, Prototype defines my Xbox 360 nostalgia. Weird take, and I totally get that. Most people say, oh, for me, it's Halo 3. Oh, it's Gears of War 2 or 3. And that totally makes sense. For me, it truly is prototype. Let me explain. You see, I was really late to the Xbox 360 generation. It came out in 2005. I didn't pick mine up until 2009. And that was thanks to a couple of buddies who told me about a myriad of games in science class in eighth grade. They told me about Resident Evil 5, which is now one of my favorite co-op games of all time. They told me about Call of Duty World at War. I went over a buddy's house and I checked out Samurai Warriors 2 Empires. I remember checking out Halo 3 on my brother's Xbox 360. To me, the 360 was never a necessity because it was in the house, but I did not know the absolutely titanic and awesome library that it held. Now, it's funny to say that prototype defines my 360 nostalgia when it's not a 360 exclusive game at all. But for me, this was the game that I was laser focused on from its announcement and said, that's why I own a 360. When I picked up my 360, I got your combo with, you know, Kung Fu Panda and Lego Indiana Jones. Of course, we showed that in our Indiana Jones video. I also picked it up for the likes of Mass Effect, the Call of Duty game I told you about, Resident Evil, but it was prototype that I was really there for. It was that and Red Faction Guerrilla. I remember leading into the launch, there were two things going on. Number one for me, these games were coming out around my birthday. I could not have been more excited if you even, like think of me hyped up on the most hyped thing ever times 500. Like that's where I was at. You combine that with the zeitgeist going into the launch of Prototype, and it absolutely powered my love for it. You see, you may or may not remember, but heading into Prototype's release, another little superhuman-like game was coming out called Infamous. And you were either an Infamous dude, or you were a Prototype dude. There was no in-between, and there was no having both. And it reminds me a lot of Battleborn versus Overwatch, where these two games were kind of incomparable, but people made the argument anyway, and they went head-to-head, -head, and I think Infamous kind of won out. But anyway, Prototype won my heart. I was a Prototype guy. So we're talking about that here in today's video, because I just, again, this month, we have no real movies, shows, games are releasing that we can base content around. So I thought, you know what? Let's just go to the drawing board and let's pick out random fun games. And that's what we've been doing all July. And here we are talking about Prototype. So ladies and gentlemen, I know that was a long intro, but I had to establish the nostalgia I have for this game and how special it is to me. So if you're new here and you're into nostalgic retrospective content, you like talking games, you're in the right place, consider subscribing. Let's begin with an OG copy on the 360. You can get this on PlayStation 4. Unfortunately, not really available physically and all that fun stuff anymore. So uh, shout out to Activision on that one. Nonetheless, though, the Biohazard bundle is something out there you can get on like eBay or whatever. But let's take a look at the OG copy with that nice, you know, early 2000s energy with prototype, you know, the hood. Alex Mercer, the blade here. This dude to me, even though he's an awful human being, was so cool. Like Alex Mercer with the hoodie. Like I wore my hood up because I wanted to be like Alex Mercer in the terms of vibe. <laughs> in the terms of vibe, that's about it. Like I thought he was so cool. And you could just, again, smell the early 2000s off this game case. And then on the back it says, Become anything, change everything. You are Alex Mercer, the prototype, the ultimate shape-shifting weapon. With no memory and no mercy, hunt your way to the heart of the conspiracy which created you, making those responsible pay. Deadly shape-shifting action, transform your limbs into claws, blades, hammers, and whips. Armor your body for defense or use advanced sensory powers like thermal vision, infected vision to track your enemies they also get into over-the-top locomotion and agility leap from one building to the next sprint up walls and run unrestricted through the streets adaptive parkour lets you move freely through the open world environment of new york city and consume and become it says consume anyone at any time take on their personality or i'm sorry their appearance and assume their memories and abilities there's so much to get into for those who are unaware this game was actually built off the back of hulk ultimate destruction right that ps2 game all the tech 
and some of the npcs and voice lines you'll actually find here in prototype which i think is fascinating the parallel there but that's how prototype came to be and eventually it got its sequel which maybe if this video does well and you want to see more we'll talk about prototype 2 later which i also have great memories with but prototype 1 it was like again it was the combination of the zeitgeist the reason i got the 360 all of that came together and, and it's just a special game to me so let's open up this copy here great disc art i love it how it's different from the actual cover you just don't see that super often and in the manual it is a 360 ass manual as i like to say meaning there's nothing real special here you do get uh drawings in there you can see them in the backdrop but no real color to it um and it is a very thin one at that they go over the game's controls a lot of the icons that you're going to see in the game's uh open world the upgrades the web of intrigue the hives we'll we'll talk about all of that in a little bit what you're going to see on the ui and it lists out all of that it talks about upgrades and evolution points collectibles navigation gliding targeting mini map notes and that's really it and then you're at the back of the manual so a pretty simple complete box copy for prototype but there's much much more to be said about the game in my humble opinion i don't think i could talk about this game without getting into the parkour first the main reason i was a prototype guy which i apologize if you have no idea the zeitgeist i was referring to i imagine there will be people in the comments who will say oh yeah for me the biggest selling point for prototype was 100 percent the parkour I loved watching Alex Mercer flip over oncoming taxi cabs, running up the side of buildings, diving off of them, gliding across the city. As you got glide upgrades, you would fly faster and further. The sense of progression, the sense of, as they wrote on the back of the box, over the top locomotion felt so good, right? You were this guy who was just a dude, but he could transform his body into anything he wanted. And you just felt so powerful. When you combine that with the speed and movement of the game, Again, it was just incredibly fun. Now, this story here, the amount of times I played this game and I still don't get it beyond the general premise is kind of sad, but also speaks to kind of the convoluted nature of it. I mean, the back of the box does, does the best job of setting it up. Like, you are this prototype. You have no idea who you once were. You were from this facility in Gentech, and you're like, okay, uh, what's going on here? And you're going to kill everyone in your path to figure out what happened. The way they deliver all of this in the, all the story beats is you're going to run around New York City and beyond doing main story missions, you are going to find random bystanders who are going to get picked up, get the life beat out of them as you consume their body and in turn their memories. And then they play these really cool, well-presented flashback cutscenes of their memories and they're very scattered. And what happens is you have this web of intrigue where you can review all these memories and stitch the story together. It's very cool. It's very unique. It's very prototype, but it is also very confusing. Pretty much put it this way. You're playing as like a villain character, which I think is also awesome. I just have said so many times, especially when talking about superhero games, like I love superhero games, but I want a villain game. Like, I don't know how else to put it. And to me, prototype was appealing because it was a straight up villain game. Now, what's interesting about, again, going back to that zeitgeist, infamous was you had, you could be the hero or the villain, but I love that there was a straight up bad guy game there was a straight up villain game it's why i support like what dc did with joker i'm like oh sweet like a villain based movie like we just have heard these heroes stories time in time out and revisions of them with you know sam raimi spider-man then amazing spider-man then tom holland spider-man it's like okay what about a movie based around spider-man's villains like we heard about craven the hunter for example so i, I just think of that type of stuff and i'm thinking okay i want more of that so to me prototype channeled some of that superhuman villain energy that i want in story so even if it was a little complex at times i love that it existed and that pretty much you were this bad guy that everyone wanted to have shut down because of you pretty much a plague gets out into new york city and it starts tearing things apart it's absolute complete destruction and it's what makes prototype 2 all the more cool and i love how they set up the story in that game more so than the first game because the second game is much easier to follow but i mean the way they interact with the story between the first and second game i don't want to spoil anything but i just think it's really awesome stuff so that parkour that storytelling that's what speaks to me but it's also the powers baby it's the powers that really sell you on everything now this game does a little thing that i don't like in games at all anymore and i didn't know it at the time when i first played it as a kid but prototype ladies and gentlemen 
Uh, it starts off the game and you got all your powers. You got the blade, you got the hammers, you got the claws. They're having you go through them all. And then the game truly starts and they take it all away from you. I hate when games do that. And I hate when games in the middle of the playthrough strip your powers away. And I, Prototype does that. Like Prototype takes all of your powers away and you got to regain them all from the start of the tale. Now there is that good feeling when you finally reach the point of the prologue and you're like, aha, here we are. And I'm more powerful than ever before. This feels great. I'll talk about the actual abilities and what they do and why I like them, but chaining off of those powers and what they do, I, I did want to get into the ability to consume everyone beyond a story point. What was cool to me about this game is you could access certain areas in the world by having a certain look and appearance. So if you consumed a soldier, you would be allowed into a particular facility. If you consumed a commander, you'd be allowed in an even deeper, more secret part of the facility. And I just love that type of interaction with the NPCs. Like they're not many, most of them look the same. And I, I as someone who is from New York, uh, holy smokes, there are more taxi cabs than in this game than there actually are in New York City, but there's a pretty stark lack of variety in, in visuals here. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. However, they make use of what's there, where I also love the play styles. Like to me, there, as a kid, there was something cool about running around as this commander and just punching the life out of big monsters and people going like, wait, that's gotta be Alex Mercer. Uh, but is it actually him or is it someone else who's like another prototype? I just created these weird narratives in my head as I was playing the game as a kid. And I, I think it just unlocked a lot of imagination based off its tool set. Of course, there's the more, I would say simplistic things. You have your blade, your claws, your hammers. They're all good for certain situations. The blade being the most iconic, but the hammers are great because you're just gonna pound away at like big tanks, pick them up throw them at helicopters, you're gonna take down strike teams. When you're doing all of this, you're gonna earn what are called EP, evolution points, and you as the prototype are going to evolve. You're gonna gain more power, more abilities, more crazy combos to do, to the point where you can like dash attack someone in the air and slide on their face. It's disgusting, it's so cool. Like there are so many different upgrades that you can get in this game and because of who the what the prototype is we should say the idea of the the flavor text of ep and what that means and what you unlock and how much stronger you truly get it feels great now it's not just beating up a bunch of humans and stealing their identity and memories and finding out what's going on indeed there are monsters in this game and plenty of them you'll find hives out in the open world amongst like landmark collectibles you'll find challenges you can do a lot of them are like speed related which i think actually works really well because again the movement in this game is fantastic so i loved seeing like how quickly can i dash through these portals how quickly can i run up these walls and chain this all together can i get a gold medal can i get all these ep from that gold medal and so on and so forth uh, but also it really is like taking on these monsters which are much more difficult like you'll pick up rocket launchers you're going to unleash like a full round of 16 of them you're going to pick up grenade launchers and shoot out more of those you can pick up assault rifles shoot out those and you're going to try to take down these monsters in any way shape or form that you can uh, you can take over tanks and, and shoot the big hive buildings again this game is just about complete chaos giving you all the tools imaginable and just letting you go hog wild in New York City. And as someone who grew up on, you know, a lot of New York City based games, thanks to Spider-Man, to have one where you just go ballistic is cool, again. Um, and so this game, I absolutely adored growing up. Even if I didn't really get the story, the sense of destruction, the crazy powers, the memories, the presentation, Alex Mercer just being a, such an early 2000s vibe. There's just so much about Prototype that I absolutely adore. And I hope I'm not alone on that because I remember this game getting dogged on a lot again because of Infamous and I love Infamous. Like Infamous 2 is amazing. It's better than really any of these games, quite frankly. It's better than Infamous 1, it's better than Prototype, Prototype 2. Uh, so I get why people are Infamous fans, but I feel like a lot of Prototype's special qualities were not given the proper attention because people just wanted Infamous to succeed so bad. It's funny, right? We, we Gaming hasn't changed much, has it? So many people say, oh, it got worse. And in some ways it has, but it hasn't really changed so much in all this time where we were still bickering about games that really weren't direct competitors in my eye, just to create a little bit of conversation online. But uh, 
this game just so many great memories with it and it's one i've replayed time in time out and it was in that package of like activision remasters that i was excited for it was this and then marvel ultimate alliance that are now both unfortunately delisted so it is what it is but if it's in your library you're in good luck so there is that at least you can re-download it like i had in the past but that's all i had to say on prototype this game is great and you see the activision label I know a lot of us are realizing that the reason Microsoft is trying to acquire Activision, I should be careful because we're recording this video way in advance. But what I will just say is that if the deal were to have gone through or did go through, whatever that may be, oh boy, would it be great if they reactivated this franchise here and just made a third entry or rebooted it and did like a, a real from the ground up remake that I'd say has like more interesting open world activities beyond what's there and gives you more tools, maybe visually enhances the game. Anyway, I'm just daydreaming now, so let that be it. That's all I got to say on Prototype. Ladies and gentlemen, fire away with your thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking down below. With that, take excellent care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.